Sri Lanka is famous for its breathtaking beaches. We've traveled to the southwest to find out how the country has recovered 10 years on. 10 meter high tsunami waves came crashing over the island's coast. An estimated 38,000 people were killed. Here in Talwata, the flood was so forceful, it toppled an entire train. When the first tidal wave came, the train had to stop here and a lot of people climbed on it to save their life. But then the second tidal wave came and toppled the train over the rail tracks and more than 1,500 people died. This Buddha statue was erected to commemorate the tragedy, close to where the train was passing when it was struck by the waves. Just a few meters away is the country's only tsunami museum. It was built by Kamani da Silva to honor the victims and as a warning of future tsunamis. Kamani herself barely survived. She still has nightmares about that day. Everything gone forever. And everywhere, dead bodies, our relations, villages. And, uh, she says the community never expected such devastation. Afterwards, she says, many did not want to go on living. These pictures tell a story of death and destruction, but they also tell the story of how a traumatized community slowly got back on its feet. They attract tourists from all over the world. Many are shocked by what they see. It's very touching. Really. Even if it's 10 years ago, I feel very sorry. People shouldn't forget what's happened, and uh, of course it can't happen again. So they, sh they, should be, uh, they should be able to get warned. The catastrophe led authorities to set up an early warning system, like here in the provincial capital of Gaul, signs show where people can seek shelter in case of another tsunami. International donations of more than 2.5 billion euros helped finance the system. The tidal wave went two kilometers inland and when it reflowed it left behind a huge devastation. Now 10 years later Gaul is reconstructed totally and it is one of the main touristic hotspots here in Sri Lanka. Everywhere you look, new hotels are being built. Tourism is booming again. The number of visitors has tripled since the days before the tsunami. Siri Gunivardeni takes us around his hotel. Business is good. His rooms are booked out. But it was a bitter blow when the tsunami hit. Everything was destroyed. And it happened just 20 days after he opened. Most of the boats, big boats ended up uh, here in the garden. You know? So we, did, we had a lot of time in getting the debris cleared. He paid for the reconstruction with cheap credit made available thanks to aid money. Without international aid, he says, Sri Lanka would not have been able to recover as much as it has. Everybody is sort of recovered and we are recovered well, well better than what it was. And we are in a better position than 10 years ago now. We have better facilities and uh, I hope it will never happen again. In fact, business is so good that he's expanded. He's moved the pool even closer to the beach. That's what the tourists want, he says, because for most holidaymakers, the tsunami is a thing of the past.